Luke 12. <clears throat> Let's uh, study a uh, subject. Let's call it Christian hide and seek. Christian hide and seek. Let's stand with Luke 12, 1, 2, and 3 and uh, see what Jesus has to say again. Luke 12, verse 1, says, In the meantime, while they're waiting there, when there were gathered together an innumerable multitude of people, insomuch that they trod one upon another, he began to say unto his disciples, First of all, Beware ye of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. For there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither what? Yeah. Hid that shall not be known. Therefore whatsoever ye have spoken in darkness shall be heard in the light. That which ye have spoken in the ear in closets shall be proclaimed upon the housetops. So Lord help us now to See several examples in the Bible of people that were hiding things, <clears throat> but you uh, you found every one of them. They were hiding, and you were seeking. So help us now to uh, add to our faith, virtue, and knowledge, and the other things that we need to be more like Christ. So we pray now that you do a good work through the Word of God in Jesus' name. We ask, Amen. Thank you. Let's be seated. So, you know, today, uh, what was today anyway? Oh, that's right. It's not Sunday. It's sports day. Isn't it? Yeah. You turn channel to channel to channel to channel. And it's sports and sports and golf and football and baseball and basketball and tournaments and trophies. And, and I wonder how many people were in the houses of God today. A lot less than they were in paying $100 a seat in stadiums. Isn't that something how much money is spent on sports? And, you know, Springfield is now going to be known as a sports hub town. I mean, they're, they're building out west of town sports complexes. Uh, we have a professional tennis team here. Did anybody know that? I mean, we have a world class tennis team here in Springfield called the, the Lasers. Springfield Lasers, they're known, most people in Springfield don't even know we have such a thing. So we have these, uh, this sport, but the, the famous, most known sport in Christianity is just hide and seek. People hiding stuff from God and other people. And uh, we have a lot of news stories through the years of people that you thought were great people find out they were just dirt. Yeah. I mean, uh, politicians and entertainers and and uh, rich people and billionaires and well, guess what? God always brings it to the surface eventually. That's right. You can take a drop of engine oil. I've said many times you can go to the go to the trench. Is that in the Pacific or the Atlantic? The trench is the deepest part. Of the ocean on the earth. Pacific. It's Pacific, right? You Navy guys. And uh, down there, it's like 30,000 feet below the surface. But you can take a drop of oil down there and turn it loose. Eventually, where's it going to go? It's going to float to the top. It takes a while to come 30,000 feet. But that oil and water never mix, you know. And so the same thing with sin. Be sure your sin will find you out. Yeah. It's like that drop of oil at the bottom of the 30,000 foot deep trench. It's going to eventually show up on the surface. And that's what we see here. So man's uh, most favorite sport is hiding from God. <laughs> so look at Jeremiah 16 and... Uh, so we see it is not mankind's first and most famous game, but hide and seek is. And Jeremiah 16, 
uh, chapter 16 of Jeremiah tells us uh, a lot of good verses here tonight. Not a lot, but several we'll look at. Because we have to see what a big deal it is to hide stuff. Like somebody, some kid steals something like a cake, a piece of cake or something. And they got icing all over their mouth. And they, and they say, I didn't do that. I don't know who did that. I'm trying to hide the evidence. It is obvious. So Jeremiah chapter 16, verse, look at uh, verse 17. For mine eyes are upon all their ways. God speaking through Jeremiah. Mine eyes are upon all their ways. They are not, what? Hid from my face, neither is there their iniquity hid from mine eyes. 18 says, And first I will recompense, repay their iniquity and their sin. How much? You know, if we confess it, we may have to pay for it, but if we hide it, it's going to cost us double. God will make sure that we pay for that. And he says here, I will recompense their iniquity and their sin double because they have defiled my land. They have filled my inheritance with the carcasses of their detestable and abominable things. That's a pretty far, powerful statement about trying to hide stuff from God. So now we, uh, so it says that it is a hide and seek game with God that man spends most of his time uh, playing this game. Now, let's look at uh, five quick things here, Bible verses that categorize the hide and seek sport that man plays. So there's several examples in scripture uh, that we need to prove this eternal point. Most of us know all these verses uh, and subjects, but there are some like the children among us that don't know this. And uh, we, we want them to know this, do we not? Yeah. While they're young enough to receive it and do something about it. So God, uh, we see here that first, in, look at Genesis 3, 8, our first example here. Some people had things and some people had themselves. And this is uh, an example of Adam and Eve hiding themselves after they sinned in the garden. And uh, they, they ran away instead of walking in the cool of the day with God. God has to go look for them and wonder where did they go. I shouldn't say wonder because God never wonders. He always knows everything. Look at Genesis 3 verse 8 to 10. And they heard, Adam and Eve heard the voice of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife did what? hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? As if he didn't know. And Adam, he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I what? I hid myself. And so we have the very first example after the very first sin uh, the first game now being played is hide and seek from God. So Adam, we see Adam and, and Eve were hiding from their salvation. I'm glad they got saved. I'm glad the picture of the atonement uh, through the lamb shed, that God shed the first blood for man's first sin. I'm glad we had that picture of their salvation. But they were hiding from that. How many remember hiding from salvation? Oh yeah, you're there. Everybody that ever got saved was hiding from their salvation. Yeah. Secondly, so go to 1 Samuel 10. 1 Samuel 10. So we see the first example is Adam and Eve hiding from salvation. And then we move over to 1 Samuel. Look at chapter 10. And we see, secondly, we see Saul first king of Israel, hiding from his service. So they were hiding from their salvation, and now we have this man chosen to be king, first king of Israel, hiding from his service for God. Look at 10, verse 21. 
I think we want to see here. And, and when they had caused the tribe of Benjamin, now they're, you know, they're looking for their man out of the right tribe, and it, it is Saul. And this guy's, what do they say, dark, tall, and handsome, maybe? And, uh, you know, he's head and shoulders above everybody else. He was sort of like a Rock Hudson. How many remember Rock Hudson? Most people didn't know that he was gay all along. You know, it, it, he wasn't all there. And uh, guess what? Pat Boone went to his house while he was pining away with AIDS and talked to him about the Lord. I watched the interview. And so he, he may have asked God to save him after, after all that. I hope he did. But this King Saul reminds me of those tall, dark, and handsome leading men uh, in the film industry. When he had caused the tribe of Benjamin to come near by their families, the family of Matri was taken, and Saul, the son of Kish, was taken. And when they sought him, he could, what, not be found. Where is this hero that we want? Where is this king we want? Well, he's not wanting to serve. He's, he's hidden himself in verse 22. Therefore they inquired of the Lord further. The Lord, they said, God, where is he? If the man should yet come thither. And the Lord answered, God said this, Behold, he hath what? Hid himself among the stuff. So whatever the stuff was, that's where he was. And uh, I'm afraid that's the uh, disease that Christians have today. We have a lot of stuff to do. We have a lot of places to go. We have a lot of people to see. We have a lot of ideas to, to bring to, to fruition. But we see here, Saul was hiding from his service. And if we're not careful, we can uh, get distracted and detoured by our stuff and we don't serve the Lord like we ought to. So, <clears throat> so what stuff stops us from fully following God and serving God our own self? He was hiding in the stuff, but I tell you, we're, America is known as a land of materialists, is it not? We're, we're material people. That, that woman called uh, Madonna, the superstar singer, who was very wicked, She's in her 60s now, but she was called the Material Girl. That was her nickname, the Material Girl. And took on the name Madonna as some holy thing when she was totally unfit uh, for service. Now, Luke 18, while you're turning there to see what Jesus said about this, Luke 18. So, hiding among the stuff, there's a story here about a rich young ruler. Now, there's other people in the Bible that hid stuff. How many remember the story of Achan hiding his stuff in the tent? How about Ananias and Sapphira in the New Testament hiding their stuff by lying to the Holy Ghost? So there's many examples through Scripture, but this one here is uh, Saul is noted because he is, it says hiding in the stuff. Now, Luke 18 and verse 20. Well, let's look at 18, 18. And the story about a certain ruler asked him, saying, Good master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? None is good, save, means except one, that is God. And then he said, Jesus says to the ruler, Thou knowest the commandments, Do not commit adultery, Do not kill, Do not steal, Do not bear false witness, Honor thy father and thy mother, and the ruler says, and he said, all these things have I kept from my youth up. You know, good works here. Now, when Jesus heard these things, he said unto him, yet lacketh thou one thing. So, here's the one thing. What does it say? Sell all that thou hast. And what else? distribute unto the poor and thou shalt have treasure in heaven and then what else come follow me so he tells him to sell out 
distribute it to the poor, those that need what he has, and just follow him and be rich in faith instead of rich in stuff. And it says here, the man, it broke his heart. You know why Jesus told him to sell all of it? Because he wasn't willing, willing to sell any of it. If you're not careful, we'll just build bigger garages for our stuff. Amen. Amen. Yeah, we just go and get a bigger shed and, and fill it up too. And when he heard this, he was what? Sorrowful. sorrowful. No, he was very sorrowful. I mean, this really stuck him in the heart. I mean, this, Jesus knew exactly what to say to this guy because he was so covetous and so possessive, thinking his stuff was his stuff when it's all God's stuff. When he heard this, he was very sorrowful, for he was very rich. When Jesus saw that he was very sorrowful, he said, How hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God? It's hard for them to repent. If they're not willing to give anything, they're not willing to repent of anything either. You know, it's all or nothing with God. You don't get half saved. You're, you're either saved or you're lost. You don't get three quarters saved or 99% saved. You're either saved, 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 or lost, 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 as the song tells us that. So we have Adam hiding from salvation. We see Saul hiding from service. Thirdly, Ezekiel 22, we see Israel and her priests hiding from separation. And I, in Ezekiel, and Ezekiel 22, and 20, verse 26, 22 and 26. So God is now uh, revealing what they're hiding, and they're hiding from se separation in their priestly duties. 22, verse 26 of Ezekiel says, Her priests have violated my law and have profaned my holy things. They have put no difference between the holy and profane neither have they showed a difference between the unclean and the clean, and here we go, and have what? Hid their eyes from my Sabbaths, and I am profaned among them. For princes in the midst thereof are like wolves ravening the prey to shed blood and to destroy souls to get dishonest gain. And her prophets have daubed them with tempered mortar. In other words, they, they've just let God's worship rot on the vine. That's what's happened today. The preachers have hid their eyes from the evil uh, of God's people and refused. They just take part in it. I mean, this is, you know, this is an epidemic. You know, sin is running rampant all over the earth, and now the churches are contaminated with the, this, uh, you know, Sunday, that's not so important, you know, I well, let's go boating every week. Uh, let's, you know, let's go uh, visit relatives every week. And, and people, going to church is no big deal. We have so many churches in Springfield, but so few people to go to churches because they're turning their eyes at, away from God and turning them to sin. And that's what he says here. They have hid their eyes from my Sabbaths, and I am profaned among them. Now, so we have here Israel and the, her priests hiding from separation. They have hidden the eye from the evil thing. And so we want to remember that we must call, call it like it is, right? Not like we want it. Look at Revelation number 4 and verse 6. Revelation 4 and verse, excuse me, 6 and verse 14. Revelation 6, verse 14. <clears throat> now we have fourthly here, so we've seen Adam hiding from salvation and Saul hiding from service, Israel hiding from separation. And then we have Revelation 6, 14. We see lost mankind hiding from the Savior. 
All of lost mankind, here's a picture, hiding from the Savior, Jesus Christ. Look at Romans, I mean, Revelation 6 and verse 14. And the heaven departed as a scroll. Wow, that sort of looks like an atomic explosion, doesn't it? Well, you, you know, whatever God does, it's going to be in a big way. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't have to be man dropping an atomic bomb. I mean, God's destroyed stuff before. The heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together. And now, just think of this explosion. It says, every mountain and every island were moved out of their places. That's a whole lot of shaking going on there. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, servants and slaves, and every free man, next word is what? Hid themselves in the dens, and in the rocks of the mountains, and said to the mountains, how many has ever talked to rocks before? How many has ever talked to a mountain or a tree? You lost your mind? But they're talking to the mountains and the rocks. And they said to the mountains and rocks, do what? Kill us. Fall on us. And what? Next word. And what? Hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. That's Jesus. The great judge, Jesus. For the great day of his wrath is come and who shall be able to stand. That's the great tribulation period. I can't, I mean, I try to visualize every mountain and every island just being moved out of their place. That is, talk about tsunamis worldwide. Talk, I mean, everything is like in a bowl being stirred up with a paddle. So we, we see Amos in chapter 9 is a, is a good verse that goes with this. There's a prophecy of that, actually, a part of it. So we have Amos, look at Amos chapter 9. So we see lost mankind hiding from the Savior. We can never hide our sin. Our sin must be paid for. It can be paid for by the blood of Jesus Christ, or it can be paid for in hell for all eternity, according to the Bible. Not according to me, but I wish I didn't have to ever teach on hell, by the way. I wish I didn't even have to mention it. I wish it wasn't a cuss word, but it is. It is a cursed place. When you tell people to go, when you tell people to go to hell, you're saying the worst thing you can ever say to somebody. Yeah. To spend all eternity away from God uh, in the fires that are never quenched in hell fire. So don't ever say that to somebody. I mean, that, that's why people say it, because they are so wicked themselves. And they can't think of anything else to say, but you go to, to Hades, right? But here, chapter 9, we see you can't hide from your sin. It says here, 9, verse 2 to 4, Though they dig into where? Hell. Though they dig into hell, then shall mine hand take them. Though they climb up to heaven, thence will I bring them down. Here we go. And though they what? Hide themselves in the top of Carmel, Mount Carmel, I will search and take them out thence. And though they be what? Hid from my sight in the bottom of the sea, thence I will command the serpent and he shall bite them. I'm telling you, that's pretty powerful, isn't it? So you can go to the bottom of the trench and God will send a snake down there to bite you and, and kill you. There are sea snakes, but I don't think any snakes are down 30,000 feet on the ground, the bottom of the sea. So these are powerful. So we see Adam and Saul and Israel, and now we see all the lost mankind hiding from the Savior of the world. He's either our Savior or He is our Judge. Right. When they say, here come to judge, 
And there ain't no judge like Jesus Christ. He said, you will be judged by the words that I speak. He said, my, my words are what? Spirit and they are life as well. So if you don't know the Lord as your Savior and you refuse to receive him as your Savior, then just call him your judge <coughs> until you get saved. Make the judge your Savior. You don't want to wait for him to be your judge. And, uh, and your soul is doomed for eternity according to all the scriptures. Scriptures have been written over a period of at least 1,600 years of writings. And every one of them warns us about eternal damnation and eternal life. Well, let's look over and finish up here in Isaiah 59. So we have Adam and we have Saul and we have Israel and we have lost mankind hiding from the Savior. But now let's turn the, uh, t turn the tables around here or put the shoe on the other foot. Now, Isaiah 59 and uh, tells us that we see God the Almighty. God, two can play this game. We see here that God is hiding from our sin. God is hiding from our sin. So he, he starts hiding too. When we choose sin over God, well, guess what? You can't find God because he, he won't hang around sin. That's why Jesus said on the cross, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Because he be, Paul said he became sin for him who knew no sin, for our sin. So wherever sin's around, God's not having anything to do with it. That's why works will never get you to heaven. Because when you get to heaven, you'll uh, you'll you'll uh, you'll sin. You can't you can't have any sin in heaven. Now Isaiah fifty nine two says here, but your iniquities what have separated between you and your God. Here we go, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. So we must be careful not to break fellowship with God. For your hands are defiled with blood and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies. Your tongue hath muttered perverse, perverseness. And none calleth for justice, nor any pleadeth for truth. They trust in vanity and speak lies. They conceive mischief and bring forth iniquity. So God says your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. What is it? I was, uh, in Psalms, is it what, 66, 18? It says, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord, he will not hear me. So we must not regard sin. Look, last scripture, let's look at 64, 6. Hang on right. 64, verse 6. So we see God, the Almighty, hiding from our sin. We have separated his fellowship from us. 64.6, we, we're familiar with this. It says, but we are all as an unclean thing. And all our righteousnesses, uh, plural, are as filthy rags. And we all do fade as a leaf. And our iniquities, like the wind, have taken us away. Seven. 64, 7 of Isaiah. And there is none that calleth upon thy name. So all men have departed. All of sin and come short of the glory of God is what he's saying here. There is none that calleth upon thy name that stirreth up himself to take hold of thee. Nobody is seeking God. For thou hast, what? Hid thy face from us and hast consumed us because of our iniquities. And so... If we reach a point in our life of, it seems like God doesn't hear me or I, I feel far away from God. Well, it's, it's good to stop and say, have I done something to offend God? Yeah. I mean, God is long-suffering. He's full of mercy. But, you know, sometimes uh, we try to back God in a corner sometimes. And uh, 
he, he separates himself from our habits, from our thoughts. And that's why meekness was such an important thing this morning. Because that is the attitude we must keep at all times, to be soft and, and pliable before God. He's the potter, we're the clay. That's all we are, it's just clay. We don't want to be full of impurities that creep in, you know. Potter wants some good clay. I mean, if you buy clay, the modeling clay, you know you're going to have to pay a good price for it. Anybody ever studied that before? I mean, it's a certain type of clay worldwide that they're looking for, the best, the smoothest, the easiest to work with and form something that's beautiful. And that's what God wants us to be. He wants us to be pure. And you can't be perfect, but you sure can have a lot smaller grains within the clay than rocks and, and briars and things mixed in with clay polluting it. So God says that these two can play the game. Man can play this game of hide and seek, but God can play it better than, than we can ever think about it. So we see that this is man's most favorite game, and we must ask ourselves, is this ours, is this our game also? And I don't say this to the Sunday night crowd, I'm set to the uh, video that's being manufactured right now. I'll say it to those out there in the future that may see this, that they might stop playing the game and get serious. Get in the houses of God. Get in churches with a real Bible, not some, some counterfeit Bible, Amen. but the real Word of God. And so here we have the Christian hide-and-seek studies that we've completed. Now, there's some good verses here, are they not? There really are some sharp verses. So, Lord, we thank you for the privilege to be here together, even for this short time. So help us to be open about our sin to you and confess it and forsake it and find mercy. And we pray for those, Lord, that we know. We know Christians that have forsaken and profaned the Sabbath that uh, think very little of doing things God's way. We ask you to visit them and put the fear of God into their lives just like you have us. We love you. We know we respect you. We call it fear, but we it's our respect for you and your word. So we ask you now to bless as we get ready to dismiss. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. Amen. Let's take our song books and stand and let's have a song before we leave. Turn to 436 if you would. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This is a good, happy song. And uh, let's sing all three verses. 436, Surely goodness and mercy. How many like this song? Amen. A pilgrim was Zion in the cold night of sin I did roam When Jesus the kind shepherd found me And now I am on my way home Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me All the days, all the days of my life Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days, all the days. Sing out, here we go. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I shall feast at the table spread for me. Thank you.
let's sing this with that, the violins, the organ, and the piano, and the trumpet, okay? Are you ready? We can do it, I think. Here we go. When I walk through the dark, lonesome valley, my Savior will walk with me there. And he'll save me in spring and will lead me to mansions he's on to prepare. Surely mercy and mercy follow me all the days, all the days of my life. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days, all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And I shall feast at the table spread for me. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days, all the days of my life.